And good evening. Welcome to Branko Broadcast. My name is Bob Branko. Tonight we're very pleased to have with us Laura Legendary, very enterprising young lady. And she's going to talk about her projects and her endeavors and her company. Uh, welcome, Laura. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for having me. Greetings, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. And you can give us a presentation and then take questions when you're finished. Okay. Would you like to kick things off with any questions, or shall I just launch into it? I think you can just give us a brief description of what you do, and especially with the, the Braille jewelry or updates, and then we can take it from there. Fantastic. All right, everyone. Well, I do tend to be a little soft-spoken, so I realize I may be a little hard to hear. I will speak as loudly as I can, but I apologize if it's not quite loud enough. Do feel free to turn up the volume on your devices because I am talking about as loud as I can. I thank you for your understanding. My name is Laura Legendary, and for those of you who are wondering, yes, Legendary really is my last name. It is my married name. I always say I wasn't born with it. I married it. And my business is called Elegant Insights Braille Creations. And at Elegant Insights, we offer a distinctive collection of jewelry and accessories, which are all handcrafted, made in the USA, and embossed in Braille. And the reason my last name is an important part of this conversation and my mention of the fact that it's my married name is because my business was started as a result of a gift I received while I was struggling through a very difficult time in my life. My husband passed away unexpectedly less than six months after we married. And I was having a very difficult time. I was grieving. I was a newlywed and a widow, all within the period of six months. And I was having difficulty moving forward. So as a way to keep me focused on what was important, and to help me in the grieving process, someone gave me a sweet little gift. It was a nothing little thing, really, if you think about it. It was actually a little stone, a worry stone. And some of you may know what I mean by that. A worry stone is often a little, literally, a little rock or a stone or a talisman or a little statue, some miniature little thing. It could be a coin, it could be a good luck charm, it could be any number of different things, but a worry stone is simply something you would hold in your hand, and the touch of it, the smoothness of it, the feel of it might bring you comfort or give you something to do with your hands if you're fretting over something, and this person gave me this little worry stone, and as she handed it to me, she said, the stone is engraved with the word survivor. And I touched the stone, and I could feel that the word was engraved there, but I couldn't see it because I am blind. And as I was telling her, thank you so much, what a sweet little gift, thank you, she said, no, 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 turn the stone over. She said, see what's on the other side. And I turned the stone over, and to my great surprise, the word survivor was written on the stone in Braille, and I was astounded. I was so moved, so touched by such a sweet and thoughtful gesture that someone would actually think to give me this little stone, not just something engraved that I couldn't really see, but something specific to me something that was embossed in Braille. And I, I couldn't even speak. I was so overwhelmed with gratitude and emotion 
that someone could be so thoughtful and think of me as someone who couldn't enjoy the little message on the stone unless it had Braille on it. I have no idea who put the Braille on the stone. I have no idea how the Braille was put on the stone. For all I know, it could be a little piece of plastic Braille tape. I never did look closely at it enough to figure out how they did it. Instead, what I was thinking was, I wonder how I could carry this sweet little thing with me everywhere I go. I sort of like a little good luck charm. I thought, I wonder if I can drill a hole in it and drop it onto a chain or put a little bezel around it and, and carry it with me on a chain or a cord around my neck. And in thinking about how I might do this, all of a sudden, in a single flash of inspiration, the entire concept of the Elegant Insights Braille Creations jewelry line came to me all at once. All of a sudden, it occurred to me, I can do this for someone else. I can make Braille jewelry. I can create something in Braille that other people can carry around with them, not just as a worry stone, but as a necklace or a bracelet or a pair of earrings. And the idea started coming to me fast and furious. I couldn't get to my computer quickly enough. I sat down, I raced home and sat down in front of my computer, and I dreamed up product names, product types, product ideas, the types of materials I would use, the types of inspirational messages they would say. I came up with a charm bracelet. I came up with a necklace and earrings to match. I came up with all sorts of fun ideas, and before I knew it, I had an entire jewelry collection, all designed, with product descriptions and ideas as to what metals I would use and what gemstones I would use, and Elegant Insights was born. And I thought to myself, now surely this thing must already exist. Surely there must be Braille jewelry out there already. Surely someone is mass-producing Braille jewelry, and I was thinking to myself, well, all I really need to do is find someone who's already doing it, buy their products, and sell them on my website. Well, to my surprise, I couldn't find anyone who was doing it. I found some people who were crafters, maybe, people who were hobbyists. I found some people who were doing Braille items using embroidery. I found some people that were putting Braille on pottery. I found some people who were creating jewelry out of maybe gold or diamonds, like a big fancy jewelry store. But I couldn't find anyone who was producing affordable Braille jewelry on a large scale that I could simply buy at wholesale and sell on my website. I couldn't believe it. I thought, well, surely someone in China is doing this already. And I even looked at jewelry manufacturers all around the world, and I found nothing. I was so surprised, but I thought, well, I'm a flag-waving maniac. I mean, I'm a patriotic, crazy person. I love my Made in the USA merchandise. And I thought, well, I wouldn't want to buy anything from China anyway. And I thought, well, since nobody is doing this already, I guess I'm just going to have to make it myself. And I set about the task of figuring out how in the world I was going to create gorgeous Braille jewelry that was affordable for my customers, that was visually beautiful so that everyone could get compliments on their exquisite taste, and something that was also appealing specifically to people who were blind or visually impaired. Not just people who read Braille, but maybe people who like the idea of Braille, but they may not necessarily read Braille fluently. Just someone who maybe could appreciate the beauty of Braille. So I set about the task of designing and creating my own line of Braille jewelry, 
and Elegant Insight has now been in business for five years. We made our debut at an ACB national convention in Reno, Nevada, about five years ago. That was the first time we sold to the public. And we recently were invited to showcase our beautiful Braille jewelry and accessories on Amazon. Amazon has come out with a brand new platform specifically for handmade products, not just jewelry, but it could be furniture, it could be clothing, it could be baby items, it could be toys, it could be anything you can imagine that's handmade, completely handmade. As Amazon is seeking to compete with Etsy, if you know what the Etsy platform is, Etsy is the world's largest platform for selling of handmade goods and crafts. And Amazon is seeking to aggressively compete with Etsy. And so they've created a new division of Amazon called Amazon Handmade Services. And in order to be part of Amazon Handmade Services, you had to go through an application and evaluation process. And the day I received the letter saying that Amazon had evaluated my product, they thought my jewelry was beautiful, they thought I was talented and wanted me to be a part of the Amazon family, I can tell you was a very happy day. I did an excited happy dance. And ever since then, I have been working toward the goal of getting our beautiful Braille embossed jewelry and accessories on the Amazon platform. And this is going to require that I hire some additional staff. Right now, I have a very small handful of people working for me. And I'm going to need some additional people to craft our beautiful Braille jewelry. And I'm going to need to fit them up with a workbench and tools and supplies and, you know, all the metal and products that we use, the parts and pieces and components that we use to put the jewelry together. And I need to set them all up with their own workshops. So in order to do all of this, which is very expensive, I just recently ran a successful crowdfunding campaign. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with crowdfunding, it's the latest way that small businesses are able to raise the working capital they need in order to fund a startup enterprise or to expand their business. And the way this works is not unlike the way it works for big corporations. When big corporations want to raise money, they do it either by selling stocks or selling off parts of their company or raising venture capital dollars by going to banks or venture capital outfits and asking for loans or additional funds that they use to expand their business. And on a small scale, for, for solo entrepreneurs such as myself, you do this by way of what is called crowdfunding. And crowdfunding is where you simply create a compelling pitch. I guess you would say you would make an appeal towards potential investors, tell them why your business is worth investing in, offer them something in exchange for a financial contribution, and use this mechanism to raise as much money as you need in order to fund your business. And that can be a small amount or it can be a tremendous amount, depending on what type of business you are, how much money you need to raise in order to fund your project. If you're a book publisher, for example, you can use crowdfunding to finance your book publishing. If you're a film producer, you can use crowdfunding to finance the production of your film. Or if you're a small-time entrepreneur seeking to expand her little jewelry business, you can use crowdfunding and ask people some of whom you know, some of whom you may not know, to contribute to your business in small amounts 
so that you can raise the money that you need in order to continue on with your business plan. And in my case, I was asking for a very modest amount, comparatively speaking. I was only seeking to raise $5,000. And I successfully managed to raise the $5,000. And so I'm happy to say that because of the successful crowdfunding campaign, I was able to begin the process of expanding the business. And I hope that you will soon be able to see Elegant Insights Braille Creations on Amazon.com. So that's one of my recent outcomes of a recent project. But I'm also a blogger, and for those of you who are interested in assistive technology and accessibility for people who are blind, you will find that I run a blog specifically about blindness and blindness-related issues. And I'm also the co-founder of a podcast that some of you may be interested in. I have co-founded a podcast on fashion and style information for people with disabilities called the Fashionability Channel. And the Fashionability Channel is an audio podcast where we talk about fashion and hair care and skin care and beauty makeup and jewelry and accessories and shoes and everything you could possibly imagine related to fashion and style for ladies and gentlemen of all ages, of all abilities, all body types, all walks of life. And fashionability can be found on iTunes or Google Play or Blueberry or our website, which is simply fashionability.com, fashionabilitychannel.com. And so on fashionability, we talk, like I said, to both ladies and gentlemen, people who are blind or in wheelchairs or who may be amputees or have any sort of disability, in an attempt to bridge the gap between the fashion industry and people who have disabilities because we believe that people with disabilities are not well represented in the fashion industry. People who are blind can't read glossy magazines. People have a difficult time getting access to fashion in stores if you are in a wheelchair or otherwise disabled. And we are almost never represented in magazines or on television or in commercials or in print ads or on the runway at fashion shows, we are not represented. So myself and my partner, Emily, launched the Fashionability Channel as a way to not only impart fashion information to people who may not have access to it, as well as to bridge the gap between the fashion industry and people with disabilities so that we are better represented in print and digital media. So that's a rundown of my various projects. I'm very active on social media. Some of you may follow me on Twitter or Facebook. It's entirely possible that you do. I'm quite busy on social media. I'm also on LinkedIn, and as I said, I have a blog, and I'm all over the place. I'm forever advertising or showing up at conventions and conferences. And I think that I will now turn the floor back over to Bob so you can open the floor up for questions if anyone has any, including you, Bob. Thank you very much, Laura. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, uh, Laura, do, uh, do you have a history of your company? In Braille? A history of my company in Braille? Yes. What do you mean, sir? Oh, like how it got started and all that, or uh, uh, catalogs available in oh, Braille? Oh, I see. Well, my company is online, so everything that you would want to know is on the website. There is an about page that tells my story. But to have a print a Braille catalog would be very expensive, 
at least I've been told it's very expensive because a catalog would be many pages long. And so I don't get enough calls for it to have my entire inventory with descriptions and prices and the like printed out in Braille. I have been asked on occasion, but the price would be too prohibitive for me to crank one out. I don't personally have a Braille printer. Otherwise, I could just print it myself. But I'd have to hire a company like BrailleSmith or BrailleWorks to print a catalog for me, and I think that would be far more expensive than I could justify. But all of the information about my business is on the website, which is at elegantinsightsjewelry.com. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, well, uh, I said- I'm so, um, Laura, this is Ann uh, Harrison. I'm sorry. Uh, Steve and then Ann. Steve and <laughs> I just want to say I admire your, you know, chutzpah, I guess you could call it, because it's really inspiring to me, because I, I have a book I just had published, and I, and when you had mentioned the funding stuff, because I wanted to try to advertise, and I think it's really inspiring to me, because I'm not really, you know, I don't know much about fashion and jewelry and all that, but you're... Your drive really made me think about how to use social media, and I really hand it to you because you really came up with something unique that wasn't done before, and I, it sounds to me you've come a long way, and I, just, I really admire that that drive you have. It's kind of kept me thinking because I was thinking of that all weekend. How do I get the word out of, you know, your product? It's great. I, I just admire that drive you have. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I have to tell you that one of the keys to successful marketing is a intense, sustained effort. And that can mean that marketing is a full-time job. I have to be honest and tell you that I spent a long time building a following on social media. I started on social media as an expert in accessibility and assistive technology, and that is how I began gathering a following. Elegant Insight came along later, and I don't have as large a following as Elegant Insights simply because I haven't been on social media with the business as long as I've been on social media as a speaker and an author and an educator. So it's been almost a full-time job making sure that I was high profile enough and had built relationships with my potential customers. It's taken many years and for the most part, I've been a one-person operation. I'm the, I'm the face and the voice of my company. And so almost everything that you see me do is me doing it. Although I have to say that with my crowdfunding campaign, I had a lot of help. It was a, it was a 30-day campaign. And I was overwhelmed by the amount of work that I had to do in order to get enough attention to get people interested in looking at my campaign. And I was more than halfway through the campaign and not quite at halfway to my goal. So I decided that I was going to need a little help from my friends in order to pull off this crowdfunding campaign, and I had a long list of friends. And it became much more than a full-time job for that 30 days. I How was you probably – motivated every day? Like, cause didn't you have days where you were like, how you know, like you had doubts? I mean, how did you keep driving yourself in the times that were, you know, like you said, it's a full-time job? You know, to be honest, I'm just going to be really honest with you and tell you that I don't always. There are times when I can't. There are days when I'm, you know, after my husband passed away, it's, it, he, he just had the anniversary of his passing this past March 24th. Now that must was be tough, yeah. the anniversary of his passing. But it was, it was seven years ago now. 
Yeah. So, as anyone who's ever lost a loved one knows, the grief sometimes takes you by surprise. Yeah. And just when you think you're moving on, all of a sudden, you know, you feel like a train wreck. Yeah. And there are days when it's very difficult, and there are days when I am so immobilized that I have to stop, I have to gather myself, I have to allow myself to grieve and be depressed and not do anything. There are days I I can't function, and there are days when I'm just blue for other reasons. I'm not accomplishing enough, I'm not productive enough, I'm not making enough sales, I'm not, you know, whatever my goal is, I'm not reaching it that day. And yeah. it's very difficult to stay motivated, um, but I'm on my own. I don't have anyone to help me. I don't have any safety net. No one is out there, you know, no one's got my back. And if I don't do it, no one, else, else, no will. one else will. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Well, that, I, okay, that's Anne? Great. Um, Laura, I want to say thank you. Um, for sending out that email that you sent to me um, right after the campaign was over, that that just that just really touched me and inspired me. And you've inspired me too. I'm working on some uh, writing too, and I've spent, thought about doing some crowdfunding to get some of my work published because I know indie authors do that. Uh, thank you for that, and you're you know you have inspired me. Well, everyone, Anne Harrison is one of the people through her affiliation with Project Starfish, who joined me in my effort to raise the funds that I needed. And Anne did a few really amazing things. Anne published a blog post for me. She made a huge amount of headway on social media on my behalf. She had some great ideas for marketing and promotion. And, Anne, it might interest you to know that one of the people who contributed to my campaign anonymously, I'm about to sneeze, excuse me. Oh, good grief, sorry. One of the people who contributed to my campaign, Anne, he did so anonymously, is a book author who actually wants me to help him with some ideas as to how to market and promote his book. So I think that any of the ideas that I came up with for him, I could certainly pass along for you. And I think that now that you know what to expect with crowdfunding, I think you should really think about giving it a try. Yeah, because not only am I doing fiction, but I'm writing a book called Embracing the Healing Power of Music, Seven Steps to Finding Your Way Out of the Darkness and Into the Light with God's Gift of... At one one point I called it song, but I'm changing that word to sound because I'm really fascinated in the vibrations of sound. And I want to write, uh, finish writing this book and get it published and possibly do some speaking on it. Well, absolutely. And I wish you all the luck in the world. And now you know from personal experience how much work it takes... To get a Actually, like um, Laura, can I, can I give you a little um, tip here? Some of those tweets I automatically I, – I scheduled to go out automatically because my daughter was here with me um, during the last week of the campaign, and I really couldn't spend a whole lot of time tweeting, 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 you know, 24-7 during that time. So some of those tweets – I did a few tweets, you know, manually, but, like, when we did the Blitz – that Friday, I scheduled those mm-hmm. to go automatically go out. <laughs> well, and you know, here's a little secret back. I would say that I scheduled 50% of my tweets the whole month. Um, I wasn't awake 24 hours a day, but I was tweeting 24 hours a day because I used a service that would do automatic um, social media posts for me. So that's why a lot of the things that you saw was, it was, you know, repetitive in many cases. Every couple of days I would go in and change the tweets to something new. Yeah, but I did, I ended up using a program. It was, it's an iOS app. It's called Delayed, and it allows you to schedule Twitter, Facebook, and SMS posts. How much does that cost? Is it for that 
Now, Delayed is an is an app on your Apple device if you're an Apple yep. user, and it's free. It's free? Oh, that's great to mm-hmm. know. Yeah, yeah thanks. Wonderful. I will definitely look at I've I've used Buffer before, but I don't, I mean, it's okay, but I don't like it as much. I, I've used Buffer as well, and I found that Delayed was just a little bit more straightforward, and um, I found that it was easy to edit my tweets and, you know, reschedule them. And I just, I liked being able to use my iOS device. I found it to be accessible. And, um, yeah, I like this little app. There's Does that really help that I... promote your business, your business that way, doing the repetitive tweeting and all that? Is it, well, on it really I'm, helpful? I'm very conscious of the fact that I don't want to spam anyone. I don't want people to become annoyed with me because I'm constantly tweeting out commercials. So I only did that during my campaign period. I don't Uh, typically do it. Right. Um, I like to engage with my customers. I like to interact with them. I like to provide them with interesting things of value. If people are following my Elegant Insights account, it's because they're interested in jewelry. And so I tweet out things from the World Gold Council, or I tweet things out from, you know, jewelry.com, or I tweet things out from Tiffany and Company. I tweet about fine watches. I tweet about things that I think my followers would be interested in if they're interested in jewelry. But it was only during the campaign period where I was really, if you'll pardon me, obnoxious. <laughs> really, did that, really, did that pay off, a lot of it paid off though, right? At the at the yes, time you, when it was needed, right? So, I, yeah. Laura, I was worried because it was Sunday, and I saw that, and I looked at you know from one of the tweets that either I sent out or somebody else sent out or retweeted for me. I looked at that, and I'm like, oh no, she's not at her campaign. She's not at the top. I can't tweet while we're driving. I don't know if she's <laughs> gonna make it. I was I was really rooting for you, girl. I'll tell you something, Anne. It was like a sporting event. I mean, people were cheering me on. They were watching the numbers. I was tweeting out as the numbers were changing. You know, I didn't mention this to the Project Starfish team, but, you know, a lot of people wait until the very end because they want to be the ones to put you over the top. So a lot of people who contributed to me, I got more contributions on that last day than I got in the prior three weeks because people were aware that time was running out and they all wanted to contribute, but they waited till the last day, so the numbers were ticking down and ticking down and ticking down until I finally got a nice big contribution that put me over the top. I saw that, and and I could not, I I, I wasn't, you know, at first I wasn't going to contribute, I was just going to contribute, I was just going to help you on social media, but when I finally, you know, third of the month came around and I'm thinking, you know, I can't I can't ask people to support something that I don't support myself. So, you know, that's why I did, even though it was only $10, that's all I could afford at the time. Still, I had to, I, I just felt led to do that. Well, Laura, well, could you describe your jewelry? Give us some specifics as to what you braille, what the braille is, and how... How practical it is for people to wear. Well, I'm glad you asked because I offer traditional jewelry items such as necklaces and bracelets and earrings, but I also offer some really fun accessories that are gender neutral and that are lovely gifts. For example, I sell bookmarks. And the bookmarks look like any other bookmark that you might see somewhere. They're six inches long and an inch wide, and they have a little tassel coming off the top. They're made of brass or copper, and we Braille emboss a message on it for you. And the Braille says something like reading rocks or Braille brainiac or world's best teacher. And we even offer one that has the Braille alphabet on it. Uh, We offer... A key tag. So if you want a Braille embossed tag for your keys, 
We sell military-style dog tags, just they're exactly like the ones that the guys in the military wear, the guys and the girls in the military. They're dog tags. I'm not talking about the animal dog now. I'm talking about a dog tag, a military-style dog tag that the guys in the military wear that has their name, rank, and serial number on it. And the dog tags, we drop them onto a ball chain, just like the guys in the military, or we add a split ring or a clip to your key, so you can wear it as a necklace or carry it as a key tag, and we can braille emboss your name or some other message on the dog tag, a date, um, you know, some sort of patriotic message if you like. We also offer charms to wear on your cane, your mobility cane. It clips on to the cord of your mobility cane. We also offer purse charms for the ladies. It's a beautiful charm. It's sort of, it, think of it as jewelry for your handbag. It clips onto the hardware of your purse, and it consists of a pretty cascade of beads and crystals and embellishments on it, all hanging from a chain. It's sort of like a, think of a charm bracelet, only instead of around your wrist, it hangs on your purse. And at the bottom is a nice, pretty, shiny copper or brass braille embossed charm with a sun or a flower or a heart or a star, any number of different shapes. All of my jewelry revolves around charms that are flat pieces of metal. They're cut out of sheets, and each of the different shapes, whether it's a star or a heart or a circle, whether it's a dog tag or a guitar pick or a butterfly or a flower, any shape, we have many, many shapes, they're all about an inch across, and we can fit approximately four Braille characters per inch on a charm, and much of our business is custom. So while we have quite a number of inventory items that are already Braille embossed with an inspirational word or phrase, we do offer the ability to custom design or personalize something specifically for you. And we also offer barware. We have wine glass charms. We have decanter plaques. We have bottle identifiers if you have a home bar. Instead of putting ugly plastic Braille labels on something, why not use a beautiful metal identifier that has Braille on it to add a pretty, shiny, classy touch to your home decor? And we mainly use brass, copper, or stainless steel as our metal, although as the price of sterling silver is finally starting to come down, we'll probably be adding some sterling silver to the mix coming up here in a few months. And we also use genuine gemstones. So we'll use rose quartz or lavender jade or green aventurine or blue agate. And we use Swarovski crystals and pearls as a way to add bling to all of our jewelry. And one of the things I'm particularly um, happy about is that with the jewelry, line, the jewelry line, I didn't just want to make it utilitarian for people who read Braille. I wanted to make the jewelry beautiful because I want people to get the same compliments on their jewelry if they buy it from me as anyone would get a compliment if they buy a piece of jewelry from a jewelry store. But I wanted it to be meaningful. And I also wanted it to be a multi-sensory experience. So not only is it visually pretty, it's textually interesting in that, obviously, you can read Braille on it, but it also is very jingly jangly. If you're a girl who likes charm bracelets, for example, or charm necklaces or dangle earrings, the jewelry has a lot of beads and embellishments and pretty little touches to it that give it a musical sound as you move. So you can hear it, you can see it, you can feel it, and I don't think you want to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely <laughs> covers the other senses. Anyone else? Um, yeah, it's Marcy. I have a question. Marcy Siegelman. Oh. Oh my. 
<laughs> Hi. Do you have a catalog on the computer? Yes. Yes. If you go to the website, um, mm -hmm. it's just the, our website is based on the WordPress platform. So if you've ever been to anybody's blog or if you've ever been to any e-commerce site that's built on WordPress, it's simply a matter of, you know, clicking the link to the thing you want to see. And I worked very hard to make the website accessible. I've tested it with both JAWS and NVDA. And so you should have no difficulty in navigating the site. You simply, you know, click the links of the things you want to see and arrow down to the descriptions. And all uh -huh. of the photographs are alt tagged, so it describes to you what the photographs are. Uh -huh. And the best news of all is that I like to say we speak human, and if you would prefer to place an order with me over the phone, we actually do that because we don't That's mind perfect. speaking to our customers. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> so I invite you to call me anytime you like to place an order. I'm happy to talk to you. Laura, it's there's nice to Sorry, Marcy. There's That's a WordPress okay. app for your iOS device. Did you know that? Yes, I use it. Okay. Because uh, anybody who doesn't use it, if you do download it, turn your visual editing off. Because if you don't, it will, it'll, you'll lose some, a lot of accessibility. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Anyone else? Bob? Don? Uh, oh, yeah, am I uh, uh, unmuted right now? Yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah, mm, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, because I got another call and I uh, but didn't know whether I was muted or not. Uh, yes, Laurie, um, uh, yeah, I think Bob uh, already asked uh, one of my questions on what, uh, uh, just what type of jewelry you have. And uh, my other question is, uh, how exactly uh, is the Braille uh, embossed uh, on different items? Uh? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm not going to tell you. That is our <laughs> company. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> How's that for that, an answer? Eh? <laughs> that's right. We yeah, consider yeah. that we consider that proprietary information, and we okay. do not share it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, okay. Um, I do have one question, though, Laura. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, Bob, if I'm taking somebody else's space, but go ahead, Ann. Um, when you okay, when you do your braille for like your sighted customers, I'm thinking of Mother's Day. Um, do you put what what the um, the jewelry says in braille? Do you put that? in print on like the opposite side or do you just leave it in braille and uh, let someone else uh, read what it says to um, the sighted person? Well, it, that I can answer that a couple of different ways. If, if someone is giving it to someone else as a gift and it's a custom piece of jewelry, then somebody knows what it says. I mean, let's say, for example, if a son is giving a heart pendant to his mom and it says, I love mom, on the necklace, then either he reads Braille or she does. Somebody is going to know what it says and will, you know, say, here's, you know, here it says, I love mom, but she'll then know what it says. Um, you know, so in other words, if somebody is doing something custom, or personalized, then they're choosing what is said. So obviously they know what it's said and they can tell the gift recipient if the gift recipient doesn't read Braille. Now, we're a Braille jewelry company. So every once in a while I do get asked if we do engraving or some other kind of um, writing or personalization in print, for example. You know, we can, but we don't. We've, we've maybe done it a handful of times because the way I look at it is you can get that anywhere. You don't need to come to me for that. You can go to any, you know, things remembered store or a trophy shop, any place that does custom plaques for Little League or the Bowling League or the PTA or, you know, whatever, um, a, you know, a gift store. 
a jewelry store. There are so many places where you can get things engraved or letterized. Um, I just don't really feel like that's very special. So we don't do it unless somebody specifically asks, in which case, you know, maybe we'll find a letter stamping set and we'll stamp the letters into the metal. Um, but, you know, we, we want to stick to our niche, and our niche is Braille jewelry. And so, no, we don't do, we don't do print letters to answer your question directly. Okay. I had a question. Um, do you have different but, levels, like high end, or low? You do, do different cost levels, or do you kind of like price it all? And because I know it depends on what you want, but do you, do you consider that's actually that? A, you know, that's a really good question. I guess you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't really think about how I would answer this in advance. So I'm just going to speak to you off the cuff about this. I care a great deal about my customers, and I am well aware that in many cases, $10 is a hard $10 to come by for some of my customers. And not all of my customers can afford expensive pieces of jewelry. And when I first started my business, I really wanted to keep my prices as low as I possibly could. So believe it or not, I actually do have some items on the website for $10. I have very few, very few items on the on the site over fifty dollars. I have one item that's a hundred dollars, only one. Everything else is fifty dollars or below. Um, now that's not to say that in the future, maybe when I start selling sterling silver, for example, that I might start selling some more upscale designs. But I wanted to introduce my product to my market at a low entry-level price so that anybody who wanted something could get something. Um, You know, as the economy – I started this five years ago, so the economy was pretty bad five years ago. And now that the economy is starting to turn back around and the unemployment rate has improved and, you know, people seem to have a little bit more money at their disposal – I'll probably introduce a few more higher-end pieces, but I don't really see myself as being a jewelry designer that offers, you know, too many of these gallery-type pieces that go for thousands of dollars. I mean, that's not who my customer is. Um, But that doesn't mean, though, that I'm selling cheap crap either. I do not sell anything that's plastic, I don't sell anything that's plated. I don't sell anything that's fake. All of the gemstones that I use are genuine gemstones. Um, They're opaque gemstones. They're not like the cut gemstones that you get, you know, like rubies, sapphires, and diamonds. They're not those kinds of gemstones. They're semi-precious gemstones, but they're genuine. Um, I don't use jewelry that has a plating on it that's going to come off when you clean it or when it rubs together or if it rubs against your skin. I don't want something that my customers are going to wear or use that someday someone is going to say to them, you know, it looks like the copper wore off of that thing and there's just some kind of shiny silver thing underneath that's, you know, kind of getting ugly. Um, I don't want my customers to experience that. I want my jewelry. Do you do garnet? Do you have do you do, do garnet stuff? I haven't like had any considered? yet. No. No, but you know that doesn't mean I don't take requests. Right. Um, right. You know, if if somebody wants something custom, you know that's the only time my jewelry is expensive is if mm-hmm. somebody wants something custom. Depending on how elaborate they want, if they're willing to pay for garnets, I'll go out and buy them garnets. But you know. The cost is then passed on to them. So yeah. if they're, you know, if they're coming to me with a custom design idea, I give them what they want, and they tell me what their budget is, and I stick to that. And um, I care a great deal about giving value to my customers. All right, we've got time for two more questions. Uh, yes, I have a question. This is Karen, and uh, do you sell? Um, charm bracelets or pins that you can wear on a 
jacket or something like that, either, you know, decorative or something like that? You know, I get asked for pins from time to time, and I have been looking around for a pin finding. The jewelry term is finding. That's like the structure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of, you know, of the pin that right. you can then embellish. Um, and so when I find the right thing that will work with our metals and our jewelry and, you know, our style, then I'll certainly come up with a pin. We do, though, have charm bracelets, and our charm bracelets are very popular because they're very jingly-jangly. They're very girly. They're very pretty and feminine and sparkly. So we have charm bracelets that have hearts. We have charm bracelets that have a spring theme with flowers and birds and butterflies. We have a charm bracelet. Our most popular charm bracelet is an autumn theme charm bracelet that has brass and copper maple leaves and oak leaves and pine cones and pine cones and acorns and beautiful deep forest green and burgundy wine pearls on it and it's like I said, very jingly jangly and it's gorgeous. And our autumn leaf collection is probably our most popular collection on the website. But oh, I do get nice. asked. Yeah, I do get Hi, asked. I'm sorry. Can anyone? Can people hear me? Yes. Hi, yes. Scott. Go ahead. Uh, I, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I've been not realizing I was still muted. And I have one. Uh, well, I have loads of questions. They'd be they'd be too much for tonight. My one question is. You said people could call you. Could you give your phone number to us yes. just in case we're yes, not although my, high my tech phone, techies? Yes, but just so you know, the email that Bob sent around had my phone number in it. So I have you, it. I have a phone number, but I want to make sh- sure I have the right one. Yes. Well, my company's phone number is 509 264 2588. Great. Thank you. And that's one of my questions. And the others are just what I'm surprised at is there has been Braille jewelry for the past um, 15 years or so. And I guess those people who have been making it just don't have the computer savvy Mm -hmm. that you found them, which is a good thing because it gave you a chance. But yours sounds more exciting than yeah. what I thought. And that, well, it's but, not that um, I wasn't. It's not that I wasn't able to find any. It's that oh, I found okay. a few people who were doing it as more of a like a craft project. I was seeking. Oh no, these are business. real. They're entrepreneurs. Um, well, perhaps one, so. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, if they didn't have any visibility for me at the time, then I, you know that that I wasn't convinced they would be able to fulfill my orders, which you know. Supply is very important if you run a business. Sure. And so I wanted to be absolutely certain I would have what I wanted when I needed it and not have to rely on someone else, Mm. you know, to produce for me in, you know, in in the quantity that I hoped I would need. So I just took it upon myself to start my own way of doing things. Uh Aha. Okay. I guess those are... I also, and I know it's probably not pertinent, but I am just curious. Did you see it one time? Yeah, for, ask, for asking. Uh-huh. I'm blind as a result of an eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa, mm-hmm. and that okay. is a slow, produ- the slow progression of blindness over time. Uh, I was born legally blind, so I've never had 20-20 vision. I was always you know, 2,200 was my best correction. But I have had light perception and color perception, and I was able to read large print in the past, but now I do not. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm just curious because you seem, I don't know, you, you just seem to have been a remarkable person, and um, I figure retinitis pigmentosa kind of is as I because I hate to say it, but you you were the best of both worlds because yeah. you learn blindness gradually and and yet you have that sighted perception and so if some of us are kind of computer numbskulls as I am uh, you I can call that number and place an order or talk and something right of course it would be my pleasure oh wonderful 
Okay. Well, thank you so much uh, for You're answering my question. Of course. Uh, well, we're about to wrap it up. So, uh, Laura, again, your phone number before we close. Sure. My phone number is 509-264-2588. My company is Elegant Insights Braille Creations. My website is elegantinsightsjewelry.com. And I'm on Twitter at Elegant Insights. And I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash elegant period insight. That makes it easy. Well, thank you, Laura, and thank you for appearing this evening on Blanco Broadcast. Continued success with you. what you do, and I, I may be contacting you very shortly. We'll see. Yep. Thank you, Bob, and thank you, I everyone. Mean, yes, thank, thank you, Laura. Thank, 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 thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Take care.